hopefully the welds hold. Got plenty of weight, let's see what happens. So I'm back at the mill, I wanted to show you what I'm doing. I went ahead and welded this out and did some grinding, smoothed it out. Um, but I've gone ahead and used the digital readout to find the very center of this square. And then, just kind of taking note of uh, the whole pattern, went ahead, I'm using the digital readout to do a, see if I can show you here. See, how I just put in the radius of the circle. This is 11 and 3 quarter hole radius, eight holes. I don't need all eight holes, but I just kind of push this next button. See how it highlights the hole? And I can go around, I need that hole and that one. And uh, I just drive the drive the machine till it gets to zero zero. And what that so I'm set up right now on one of the corners. But we're gonna drill holes through all four corners. I'm gonna install little guide tubes, just kind of alignment tubes that the plate will align on and then the bolt will go through. Okay, so I have the holes all drilled and I have some dimensional pipe that I've cut down. Got to take these over to the lathe and just break the edges and give a little taper on one side so it can go on the plate easy and then we'll get those welded in. So I've gone ahead and cleaned up all the holes and trimmed all the pieces to the right length and I slipped them in without doing this extra little shoulder work here and tried the plate on and it would just barely fit if I kind of it was just a little more tight than I wanted it to be. So you can see I've added a bit of a shoulder to each of these four and then they'll be welded in. We'll have the plate goes on like that. So you may or may not be wondering, okay great, you have this little alignment tube, you're going to use a cap head screw, where it, how does it grab this plate? The plate can just lift off at this point. And the answer is I went to the lathe and I made up a handful of these inserts. I just took a nice fat rod and turned it down, drilled it out, and then cut off in the bandsaw uh, these four and of course put them back in the lathe and put a little chamfer on them. And drop this in, we're going to weld that. And what that means is that will keep this bolted to the frame. So I think that's a slick solution. I just need to get in here and weld these four in. Well, I'm back at the Bridgeport mill and you can see I've made progress. I've gotten these pieces and these pieces all welded to the frame. So once I had those welded in place, I was able to take the heights of these two determine how much I was off and in fact I needed to shave these off just by like 15 thousandths of an inch you can see if they're they're milled down I use, I use that end mill right there and I need to go ahead now and remove these pieces and drill the bolt holes so they're nice and square to the frame so I have the holes drilled here for all the bolts and I wanted to point out I think it might be helpful to show you from this angle. One of the downsides to making things without specific plans, the head on this bolt wasn't going to fit. Um, so when I set these up, I drilled a half inch hole all the way through, and then I drilled a three quarter inch hole just on the top of this. And so I've cut the head off the bolt, give myself a little alignment pin there. It's a little smaller than a half inch, and that way I can find it through. Top it, the little pit peg drops into the hole, and now I just need to come in here with a welder and grab it from that side, and we'll we'll grab it around the. But I need to get these in, bolt this down, get these snugged up so they don't move, and then we can go ahead and start to position. It's right about here, the back plate of the pug mill.
I have it set up on the workbench here. And uh, this is a bit of a tricky bit, how to get all three of these aligned. So I wanted to take just a moment and show you how I did that. So just to remind you, once I had this and this welded to the frame, we put it on the bridge port and I cut a little bit off this until these two were perfectly in alignment. But once those were set, I'm really not trying to worry about um, square anymore. And everything needs to be square to this. So once I had these two in place, I could put this rod in and down at the far end here. Now it won't do it because this center plate is in, but with this center, this bearing right here not holding it, the only thing that holds the shaft is this coupler. So I was able to lift this end to its height and to its lowest, make a mark with a board, take the number in between, and that tells me where this rod is centered. Then uh, I would go ahead and, this is not welded yet, but I slip it into place, take some measurements, take it off, and I've been trimming the feet down. Now until it all goes in, everything goes in nicely, and I've resulted in the height of the final rod that I need. So, before I weld this in, I want to come in and bolt the rest of the body to this. And I want to make sure that the kind of the up and down angle here, I don't want to square to the table or square to the frame. It needs to be squared to the shaft. And the easiest way to do it would be to just slip it over and I'm going to make a little spacer here that will kind of align it. And then with that being held in place, then I can grab these welds and I know that it's square both up and down and side to side to this shaft that's now set. I can move. I'm not moving, the bar doesn't move. It's the whole body that moves. You can see it move. And so I have 3D printed a really nice snug fitting alignment tool. Look at that. So that'll help me hold the whole thing in alignment and then with this in place, I'm gonna go back and get these welded in and then we should be good. Now, obviously, um, I need to cut this off, it's too long, but this is an advantage, has been an advantage to leave this a little extra long through the building process, but. So I'm ready to put the holes in, and rather than take the time and like CNC it in, I'm just gonna do it by hand, but I did make myself up a template, uh, exactly the size and location of the holes, and I'm gonna put a little 3M Super 77 sprayed on the back of this and stick it down and use that as a guide and just be careful with a drill and a Dremel and we'll get those opened up and then I also have some holes I need to make on the side for power inlets and outlets that sort of thing so well I've made a little progress since you've seen this last you can hear the squeaky I have nice rubberized feet on the bottom and I did add a rear hoop and a little strap to I'll show you how that holds the stainless steel table that'll be on the top and the other little bit I added was I answered the question where our control box is going to go here's our control box it still doesn't have the electronics in it and I'm still going to put some stickering on here to identify these but it will sit like that so it can be in a tucked away position, or when you're standing right here pugging, you can turn it a little bit more towards you, have quick access to the e-stop. So I think that's going to work really good. These are straight off of Amazon. I'll give you the price. They weren't, they weren't terrible compared to going to an industrial supply house. And another advantage of a quarter inch thick wall frame is... I didn't have to weld a nut inside. I could just drill and thread a hole that it goes right into. So I have nice professional looking industrial feet. I want to start working on putting the auger blades on, but before I do that, I need to put a keyway in this. This auger piece here is going to be the hardest piece and I'm not convinced I want two paddles. I think I want a continual helix, but I needed to know the diameter and I wanted to make sure I didn't start too small before I cut it out of metal. 
So I've taken this shape and I've marked it out on the steel and I need to cut this out and figure out how to bend it and then we'll grind to fit. So I'm going to get this hole drill first then I'm going to use a grinder to cut this out. So I have the, the slit cut into the disc and boy this is strong stuff. I knew this was going to be one of the trickiest bits. A lot of times people make special two-part dies and they'll put this in a press. I don't have a press and I don't want to make dies. So I grabbed it in a vise and beat on it with a sledgehammer and that's how much I got it to move. So I'm going to go at it a different way. Okay, here's the plan. We're set up for a pull. Let me show you how that welding turned out. Hopefully the welds hold. Got plenty of weight. Let's see what happens. Well, it looks like it's working. Rather than try to bore this out to make it fit, it's just a little too tight. So instead, I'm just going to turn this diameter down very carefully until this will slide on. And I think that's the way to go. Okay, so I have it where I want it. But I am going to put a nice heavy chamfer right there. Okay, so I wanted to show you what I was doing here. So I initially had turned it down to this amount. And I want to show you why I decided to move it further back. What I made was a template that represents the inside shape of the pug mill. Now I cut this off to be exactly three inches inside the kind of the snorkel of this outline. And you can see if I were to put this here, look how much I'd have to trim off here. All of that would have to be trimmed off. And I just felt like that was too deep. So I've re, I've cut it further back. There you go. And you can see that I only have to trim a little bit off of this right here. And based on that template, that line right there is my starting point. Grinding this down so it has a nice tight fit. I'm shooting for probably an eighth of an inch off the inner wall all the way around. And it'll be a quarter of an inch off the wall for, for the beater bars. This rear bearing right here has these little grub screws. There's two of them. One, two. And they're going to give me some of the support I need to make sure that when I reverse this auger, uh, that is what's going to keep it from going out. I'm also going to install a uh, band right here, a clamp. But uh, So I did take the opportunity and put a nice groove in this just to give those two grub screws a little bit better purchase. So, wanted to point that out. I've gone ahead and got the wiring all set up in the box. It's connected to its swivel base. Uh, the motor is connected. Uh, it does actually run. I'll show you that. And it's speed adjustable. Still need to get a little knob for this here, but... And it does work in both directions. And then this switch here will turn on the vacuum pump once we have it set up. So, uh, e-stop works great. Yeah, really happy with how that, that part turned out. So you may recall that I'm going to have a shaft seal that's going to ride inside that seat right here. But um, I want to take this thick chunk of 316 stainless and I'm going to use maybe 40% uh, of it to make a uh, cone piece and it'll be like a stainless steel cone that will weld on and part of what I'm going to have riding around on the back wall is a kind of a scraper bar and I'll need to make sure I integrate this this cone right here into this bar. We'll have to do a little bit of milling, a little bit of welding. I faced it off, I bored it out so now it's uh, will fit our auger shaft and my next step is I need to trim this at an angle and come in here and cut off the part we need. The rotary 
three phase converters still running for the lathe, but I wanted to get out of the room and show you this is what we got off. So I think this looks really good. Now I'm going to hold it like this in the lathe and we're going to get rid of this uh, little intrusion. And then we're going to make enough room so that this can slip up over this seal and cover it. Um, so we'll make a little bit of an indentation there and make that seal fit. Okay, so here it is off the lathe. Have a nice oversized pocket so that it'll easily clear it on the back wall of the mixing chamber. Next, you need to mill a little spot away right here. Well, even though I ground these all down, I thought it would be good to put them back in the mill and just clean this up. It'll make welding easier. And then I wanted to just take the top of this crest off because that'll be the part we were going to have to grind the most. But these are still a little bit big and then we'll just grind them to fit. Well, as you can see, I went ahead and got the rest of these all tacked on off camera. Uh, it was just really awkward and I needed to concentrate on getting this to be all tacked up right. So I have little tacks on each one so I can slightly move the angles around. But I'm looking at the spacing of the fins and I think everything is looking pretty good. <laughs> I was so happy to get all these tacked on and I'm sitting here looking at it and I was realizing that uh, all the fins were at the right angle, but the spiral was opposite from this this auger. So that's the upside to just tacking them on. I just had to pop them off and grind the little spots and re-tack them on in the right way. So what I want is basically a contiguous uh, swirl as if pieces were missing. Minor correction. But now I need to weld all these in and... Need to get this little guy welded up. I got these all welded up. I think they turned out fairly good for a home welding job. You can definitely see I put a lot of heat into this. They all look good and then I have my scraper bar installed. You see I ground some bevels on it first and got that in place. Okay, so I have the lid fresh off the CNC and this groove I'm going to run a bead of silicone in there and that lines nicely with this kind of a sharp edge. So that will be my vacuum seal. Uh, and I am going to take a router and just break these corners and I'm 3D printing a kind of a template right now. should be off the printer in the morning and I'll get a sense of the insert. but. The next step is to work on the metal and I'll get a little extension out here for the handle and I have a clamp that I'm going to put right here to be able to lock this in place. And since I have the silicone out, I'm going to go ahead and get these corners broken and all the edges rounded over and then we're going to silicone. I'm using silicone on this frame because I'm hopeful that it uh, will take care of vibrations or I don't want any buzzing or anything weird. So. So I need to work out how this handle is going to go. And so I've made this part and drilled a hole for a pivot and I can come in with the welder and I'll just hold this up into its spot and we'll tack it in place and that'll guarantee a nice aligned handle.
Okay, so the handle mechanism is all coming together, but I need to install a latch. So I've gotten this draw latch here, straight off of well, stainless steel. I think they use them in boating and a variety of things for latching down, but I want to be able to latch down the lid. And initially I thought I'd put some screws into the plastic, but I'm not, not feeling that. So instead I've taken a little rod and put a slot in it. And I'm going to take the provided hook. I'll weld that on. Get that obviously centered. Weld that on and trim off those little holes. And I'm going to drill a little hole up in here and we're going to provide ourselves a installed hook and attach that there. And that is about all that's left. Have the handle and latch assembly working nicely. I took the plastic film off the stainless steel deck that looks really nice.